Hello there, music lovers. Thank you uh, so much for dropping by the channel and uh, doing all that you do. I really do appreciate it. And I uh, thought I would talk about the kinks in this video because they're in the news again. There's uh, more talk of a reunion. There's been talk of a kinks reunion for many, many years, but it never seems to happen. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things that has been keeping it from happening uh, is not just the strife that is internal with the band like the kinks you know they've got some band members that don't get along uh ray and dave davies uh the brothers that pretty much run the band they're notorious for having this love-hate relationship but i think what's been keeping it from happening is the fact that dave davies had a debilitating stroke um i think it was in the mid 2000s it's been a number of years now but it took dave a while to um do a lot of things again to uh, walk, talk, sing, play. And, um, you know, that is definitely a uh, factor in the Kinks getting back and playing again in any real serious way. Uh, I even got a chance to see Dave Davies. He, um, he was playing just outside of Richmond, Virginia, and I went with a friend of mine who's a really, really big Kinks fan. And, uh, you know, I normally wouldn't have gone to see it, but... Um, you know, I wanted to hang out with my friend and have a good evening and everything, so we went. And, uh, you know, Dave Davies is not what he used to be. I even took some video of it and uploaded it to this channel. This was back in April. I'll put a link to it down below, and you, you can kind of see for yourself. Um, Dave Davies has got a lot of spirit. He's quite the, quite the character, and that was really what you went to go see. I think anybody who goes to see Dave at this point is going to just experience him and spend the evening with him, appreciate the fact that he has come a long way since his uh, stroke. And uh, he's definitely not playing the way he used to. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the hand that he uses to strum is not uh, in the best of shape. Uh, he's definitely not a technical player. Uh, Dave has done some amazing guitar work over the years. I mean, Dave is an innovator in the guitar world. He's the one that, as far as I know, invented the heavy guitar sound. He, uh, back in the 60s, uh, took a knife and he spliced his uh, amp and so when you hit the chords it came out real fuzzy and kind of angry and you know had this real dirty kind of sound and that became the kinks guitar sound you know you go back and you listen to like you really got me and those kinds of songs um, it's got a fuzzy kind of sound to it and that was the beginnings of the heavy guitar sound that would give way to metal uh, there was even a documentary about about metal where they interview Dave and they talk about how he came up with that sound and how that was an influence on the entire metal scene. Um, and Dave is just, he is a underrated guitar player. Uh, you don't hear a lot about him, but you go back and listen to a lot of kink stuff, uh, especially you getting into the 70s and 80s too. Lots of great stuff. Um, great guitar solos. Um, and uh, it's a shame that he's not playing up to that level but uh, it's good to see that at least he still gets out there and he still is trying to fly the king's flag uh, and who knows maybe him and ray will get together and do something at some point um you know ray was talking about it recently he mentioned that it wouldn't be on any kind of like rolling stones type scale and after seeing dave live i can kind of see why that probably wouldn't work you know i just don't see dave leading a rock band you know, on any kind of arena rock scale. I just don't see Dave being able to do that. Uh, Ray mentioned in a recent interview that more than likely they would just play smaller venues and and, and be more of a, a low-key fair, which kind of makes sense uh, unless they get another guitar player in there. And plus, you know, Ray Davies is getting old. He's like 74 years old. I saw some interview footage with him recently, and he's just, you know... You know, I love him. I love Ray, but he's just getting really old. And I know that he used to be really energetic up on stage, jumping around. And, and I just, you know, I think that anything that, that the Kinks do now is going to be much more low key than we've ever seen. And so, uh, yeah, Ray Davies, uh, the singer, the songwriter for the Kinks, to me, he's one of the best ever. One of the best songwriters. I mean, I put him right up there with Lennon and McCartney, with Bob Dylan. He's that good. He's one of the best. Uh, he has this way of writing these songs that make you think, and I often find myself in some of his songs, you know, and I love it when you can listen to a song lyric and you feel like it's just speaking to you directly. 
And, um, you know, he just has this way with words. Uh, always did love Ray Davies. Um, and a lot of people just have different perceptions of the uh, Kinks. Uh, some people have never really heard of them at all. Some people just think they were this band from the 60s. They maybe remember the song Come Dancing from the 80s was a really big hit. There's so much more to the uh, Kinks. Their catalog is very, very deep. Uh, they were only active uh, for about 30 years from uh, the mid-60s to the mid-90s, but they were very consistent during those years, always putting out albums. Um, and, uh, you know, in the early part of the 70s, their albums were very British. They were like these concept albums that nobody in the States would even understand, including myself. I didn't catch on to them until the late 70s when they started to adopt more of a, you know, like an arena rock sound. And they started to have these like FM hits, you know, with uh, the Misfits album and low budget. Uh, but what I caught on to them when they put out this album in 1981 called Give the People What They Want. When I heard Destroyer, that blew me away. I just love the groove of that song. It's a very heavy song. As a matter of fact, that album just has a very in-your-face, heavy kind of sound. Uh, kind of reminds me of uh, Abacab from Genesis. Not in the songwriting or anything, but just in the sound. You know, how that album was very much in-your-face. The drums were very loud and heavy, and that's how this album is. And so, yeah, I would definitely recommend in my, uh, you know, my five favorite kink songs, Destroyer is amazing. And then also the title track from that album, Give the People What They Want. Love that song. That song is about shock value <laughs> and, um, and how, you know, people are getting harder and harder to please and to shock. And I feel like the song is even more relevant now than it ever was. You know, there's even a, a line in the song that's, um, you know, blow out your brains, but do it right. Make sure it's prime time, but not on a Saturday night. You know, I just love the lyrics and, um, you know, give the people what they want. It's an awesome track. Also like uh, Do It Again from the Word of Mouth album. Always did like that. And then... Um, Another one of my favorites is a track called I'm Not Like Everybody Else, which was a Dave Davies song that was originally written back in the 60s. But um, they did a live version of it on this album called uh, To The Bone, which was actually their last album that came out in 94. Uh, and um, what's interesting about this song is when I first heard it, um, it spoke to me. Uh, my father, when I was a kid, he used to, he used to tell me, you know, He'd say, son, you know, if you do things like everybody else, you're going to get the same results that everybody else does. And what he was trying to tell me is, you know, don't follow the crowd. Don't do things just because everybody else is doing them. Think outside the box. Be different. Not for, you know, just to be different, but think outside the box. Think for yourself. And so when I heard this song, I thought of my father and it, uh, it spoke to me and it really, really hit me. And for some reason, I never told him about it. Um, and then about 10 years later, the song was used in The Sopranos. Of course, I'm Italian. That's kind of like a rite of passage. You've got to watch that series, right? And so my father was a fan of that show. And at the end of the show, when they rolled the credits, they would often play these great classic songs. Uh, and so on one episode, at the end of one episode... I'm Not Like Everybody Else came on, and I was shocked. And it was the live version, too. It wasn't the uh, one from the 60s. And so when my father heard it, it resonated with him, and he loves it now. And so uh, I thought that was cool how uh, we both kind of got hit with that. And that's kind of what I was talking about, how these lyrics just have a way of really hitting you deep. And so that's, that song is very, very special to me. Uh, I'm going to put all this stuff downstairs uh, so you can check it out. Um, this live version of I'm Not Like Everybody Else, the guitar on this by Dave Davies is just stellar. Uh, the song practically opens up with a guitar solo and uh, it's just a beautiful solo and uh, I highly recommend you checking this out. And then uh, probably my most favorite kink song is a song called Days, which I think is one of the most beautiful songs that's ever been written. Uh, you know, if you've ever had somebody in your life that you lost and that you miss, um, 
and that you think about this song is for you you gotta you gotta check it out it's uh another song that was written in the late 60s but it was uh, done live on the album to the bone which um was on the same album as uh, i'm not like everybody else the live version of days is just amazing and um, i'm going to put a link to that too um so those are my favorite kink songs. I want to know what you think. What do you think of the kinks? You know, what do you think about them possibly getting back? You know, what are your favorite kink songs? Let me know. Put it down below. Be sure to uh, give this video a thumbs up. If you like it, hit subscribe too. And I will talk to you later.